Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to take on a classic. This one's a beautiful reel, uh, but I had a request that came in. The request was to do the Ambassador 7000 lever drag. I thought I had one, but I don't. Uh, but I do have the 7000, which is the high speed, and it's a classic wide-framed uh, Ambassador. This one's in beautiful condition. Uh, it's just been sitting on my sideline for a while now, uh, but I thought I would take it apart anyway and show you. Now I did one on the 5500 5, a while ago. It's not quite the same reel, but in a lot of regards it is. Uh, smaller chassis and the like, but uh, I thought I would take this one apart because there have been requests out there uh, to do various reels, and, and if I can't um, can't get to them right away. I try to put them into uh, some sort of a pattern that uh, says if I see one or find one, uh, let's go ahead and, and do that. So this, that's why I'm going to do this one. And I apologize, it's not the lever drag to uh, our good friend from uh, Australia who asked about that. But if I find the lever drag, I will certainly do that one as well. So this one's made in Sweden, and uh, we're going to start by uh, taking off the handle assembly and the star drag. We'll do that by removing the the holding ring and the set screw and then the cap uh, nut. The cap nut is an 11 millimeter nut and, and uh, the next thing you want to do is there's a little uh, e-clip on the end of this one so you just need to work that off. There's several ways to work it off. Sometimes you can just get it with your hand. Sometimes if you pivot a fingernail on it you can just push it off with the other side. I don't have the uh, the tool here right now to uh, the snap ring plier to kind of take it off, but that's okay. And that's what we're looking at there, the E-clip. E-clip because you have the two tags and the, the little uh, tag in the center makes it look like the letter E. I'm going to put that into my parts bucket. Those of you that watch these videos know I keep a parts tray close at hand so that I don't lose the small pieces and parts. Uh, and that's exactly the purpose of that when I know I have small ones. So. I'm taking these off. I have a familiarity with this reel, so I'm kind of going at it, not quite breakneck speed, but I am going at it uh, in a uh, reverse order. Uh, and you do notice that I put them into the parts bucket. So there's two things that uh, are recommended here. The first is that you go get a schematic of the reel. Uh, here's a schematic. It's the burst diagram for all of the pieces and parts on it. This one was available right at the Abu site. Um, get that for the reel you're working on and or take pictures along the way so that you know the sequence that you took the uh, the reel apart and uh, if you run into trouble you can go and view the pictures on either your cell phone camera or a digital camera or even uh, like we're doing here on a video camera okay so the star drag is off and we have this plastic uh, ferrule and we have a shim ring behind it uh, just important to notice the sequence to that. Now I'm going to take the side plate off. The side plate has three what I call thumb screws. Um, they've got a rigid um, quarter inch kind of surround on it and once you break the, uh, the initial piece you can actually turn them off with your uh, forefinger and thumb. So I'll go ahead and take that off. That will remove the side plate from the, the core case. And again this reel is in excellent condition. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see any problems in that, but uh, again, I want to show you the interior and what you would do to service this. So we've got the three thumb, uh, thumb screws out. You can, they will remain with the case. We're going to take the two side plate screws off now. And those side plate screws hold the bridge. We'll get to the main body in a moment. I'll show you how to service that as well. Again, if you don't know the uh, where these come from, take the picture at this point and it'll uh, remind you. And one of the things I like to do when I take these side plate screws is that I like to lay them on the table before I put them into my bucket. Sometimes, for whatever reason, manufacturers have do, uh, different size screws, usually a clearance problem with what's going on inside. So you want to make sure that those two screws are the same size uh, before you proceed. In this case they are. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back in here. And now we should be able to lift the case off of the bridge, which we can. And this is pretty typical of almost every um, uh, Abu uh, ambassador that's out there. Very typical setup. So let's just go over it quickly for you. Uh, there's a release mechanism here, which will push the spool gear in and out. We should be able to see that 
here you push down and it releases the spool by pulling this into the guts of the reel the spool has a offset on it and once it pushes the spool gear in it clears the side plate back here and it allows the spool to, to spin freely and uh, then it re-engages with a click mechanism so this is our click mechanism here there's a trip we will see it when I take the main gear off but there's a trip lever here that when you return it will push all of this up and reset so let's let's just go do that and you can see now that the spool gear is back in place oops there we go the, the main gear came out this relaxed and this pulled the spool gear back in okay uh, from a uh, servicing standpoint all this requires is a little bit of oil uh, gear oil is fine I'm going to use a um, um, Relax for that and we'll just put some on the, the common moving places I don't like to use grease on these because grease can clog this and actually on that spool gear I'm just noticing there the spool gear had a little bit of grease on it and it's it's coagulated so let's go ahead and take a, a little uh, q-tip or cotton swab see if we can't pull that off of there and we'll go ahead and put some fresh grease back on that. Oh, this should be on both sides. Yep, it is. So let's get that cleaned up back here. Apologize if that's not getting seen too well on the camera, but I can assure you it is getting clean there. You can see it on the stick. And then let's just go ahead and take a little bit of uh, real grease. In this case, Pen Precision real grease. Doesn't matter which manufacturer you're using on these. Just make sure it's designed for fishing reels. We'll go ahead and just put a little bit back on that. And then remember the way that this came. So this is the indentations on the spool gear that catch the spool. And, uh, and when you go to free spool release and you pull that out, it disengages this and allows it to ride. Okay, so that goes back in this way then. Okay, and we'll reset on that. And now what we have is we have the main gear stack and we have the anti-reverse dog. The anti-reverse dog is a friction dog. You can see that there's a little bit of a wedge here on two pieces of metal. What that'll do is that'll grip the click ratchet or the anti-reverse ratchet. I'm just gonna clean some junk off of that. And uh, it's kind of held in by friction. So, uh, and then this side on the bump guard, there's no uh, spring on it because the bump guard actually uses the side plate uh, for, uh, getting the fix on that. Okay, let's just take this apart. We'll show you the interior now. So we have on the back of the gear, what I was talking about is the anti-reverse gears uh, click ratchet or tooth ratchet that's going to catch. We've got the base plate for the um, gear sleeve. And then working backwards now, we have a, um, a tension washer. We have the internal uh, dry washer and then on this side we have the uh, these look like carbon tax type of a washer I'm just going to reset these on the stack uh, these do not need to be lubed they can be oiled in this case there's plenty of uh, oil sitting on here right now so let's just show you the sequence so we have the one that's sitting in there and I'm not going to go ahead and pry it out. I know it's in good condition. Then what we have is we have the metal washer next. It's a full round metal washer. And we have the next of the drag washers. And these are commonly available drag washers. So if you need to have them replaced, if they're cracked, chipping, not flexible, go ahead and replace them. Then we have the keyed washer. The keyed washer always sits in the middle of drag stacks for the most part. And there's a little indentation into the, the gear itself. You can see it, how it sits there. Uh, if it, if you, this one cannot go in first on this particular one because it's a, it's a minor indentation. And if you leave it out, it won't. Uh, if you put this one in second and that third, it won't operate properly. So make sure that it's in the middle. Last of the drag washers, last of the metal, and then there's that little uh, cap washer that goes on top of it. Then we're going to go ahead and set this. I wanted to show you before where that anti-reverse. Um, 
dog goes, but let's go ahead and set that onto the tooth ratchet. To do that, we simply grab it and just sit it in. You want to spread that metal piece and lock it in. So you can see from the back how that engages now when it's fully engaged. And again, it's a friction wash uh, operation, so it'll spin like this. The, the metal will always be engaged. As soon as you go to back it off, the friction is going to pull it in like that and stop it. So we can go ahead and put this assembly back on. And then you just want to align that uh, any reverse dog with the post that I showed you before. Make sure that you get that on there and that everything is setting up properly. And we should be good there. Right. So now you can actually see now it how it works like that when it's in operation it'll come off. Now that'll bump up against the side plate here so it doesn't have the full swing out. And then when you go to stop you can see how it's a friction grab that's, that's operating that. Okay, so this reel is essentially done there. We have a, a, a burring plate on there, so let's give that a squirt of oil while we're at it. And this is a bushing, I believe. Now let's just get that in. And then we're just going to go ahead and put it back the way we found it. And just give me a moment. You want to line the hole in the case up with the release for the free spool. And you should hear a snap, which we just did. Just make sure it turns freely before you do anything else. We have the two holes here with those small screws. Again, if you uh, if you didn't take pictures or if you didn't know where they were, uh, you can refer back to that um, schematic with the burst diagram to see that they belong there. But uh, if you have a good memory, uh, you'll know that that's where they came from. All right, so we're going to put that back together. And now I can test the free spool release, making sure it works. I don't like to, I showed you how it operated before we took it apart. I don't like to, to redo that again until uh, I have the case on. So we're going to have put it down and we're going to turn it and make sure it triggers back up, which it does. And if you remember next, we had our, our shim washer came in. Now this was interesting. I remember this maybe just because of the way I saw it, but you have an indentation in this ferrule here for the drag washer. The other side is flat, the flat part belongs below, and uh, again, these are things you need to note on because uh, if you don't pay attention to that stuff, you're going to find out that uh, that you're going to have trouble with it later. Okay, there we go, we just set that. Alright, so then just continuing up the stack now, the next part was the drag washer, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the star drag. This you just got to be a little bit careful with, make sure you have it properly threaded. That first thread is a little bit tough on that uh, gear sleeve. But if you, sometimes you have to play with it. I get the comments on my uh, my site that uh, it's nice that I demonstrate that I'm human all the time by trying to maybe rush things and not get it done properly. But just take your time. The uh, There's been a saying that goes on around here. Uh, you need two things to work on fishing reels. The first is a sense of humor. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself, I think. And then the second part being uh, you need patience. And I've learned you need a lot of patience in this. Okay, then back to that E clip now. So, oh, we gotta put the. I'm almost out of sequence there. I'm gonna put the tension washer on. And put the handle on because you can't take the handle off without that e-clip or with that e-clip being on there. All right, now the e-clip goes in, and that's what's holding the drag drag stack to the bridge. Now, you remember we were able to pull that uh, gear set off, so here we go. We're being able to put it back on now. I'm just looking for a little nose plier to pinch that on. I'm holding it. I don't want to shoot it around town somewhere and then have to go and try and find it. Just make sure both sides are in the groove and then you can come back on uh, and do that with a pinch of the pliers. That 11 millimeter cap now. Grab the wrench to tighten that down. Make sure it's nice and tight. I get that all the time. Then make sure that, oops, that's why it wasn't going. Okay. Make sure that you have your uh, star drag nut down enough 
that there's clearance for the handle to sit, which is what we've just done there. And then once there is, you can get the cap on. Now you don't have to over tighten that because we do have a, um, a little holding retaining ring that's going to hold it for us. And now you just have to line that up with the hole for the set screw. And in this case, I'm a little bit shy, but you can use your wrench on top of that and you can just kind of turn it until it lines up. There we go, we're lined up now. And then the last part on that side plate then is this, uh, this screw that holds the assembly together there, the, the little retainer clip. Okay, so that's uh, easy enough to service this. Now again, this one's in good condition, but even if you had one that was uh, being fished for the season and uh, needed the service, you would do the same things identically. Let's just go over quickly to this other side of the assembly here. We have the spool, let's pull that out. Careful, warning. There are four little pieces of plastic that allow this to ride smoothly. When you remove the spool, make sure that you pay attention that you have these pieces of plastic and that you don't go ahead and lose them. Okay, so on the back end of this, we have our main, uh, main gear, which is gonna drive the smaller gear so the spool will drive the big one, the smaller gear is going to drive the level wind feature. And uh, again, I'm just going to hit these with some oil on the, I believe that's a bushing, and on the release assembly for the clicker. And we can put some blue grease on, the, uh, on that plastic wheel there, just in the teeth there, just to make sure that that's kept lubricated. So I'm just going to go ahead and put just a little bit on that, that'll work itself in over time. The last thing I want to do is just check, make sure that the back of the spool is clean, which it is. As I mentioned, this reel is in very good condition. And we just want to seat this properly. And this is where you, you learn that you have fingers that are too big for servicing fishing reels from time to time. And then once we do that, we're going to take this now and look at the orientation on the three screws, know where the bottom of your reel is. Usually the decal will tell you where to line it up with. Look for the three holes on the inside. And you should be able to set that properly. And then again, you can hand tighten these screws until the last uh, final turn there. You want to make sure if you're putting uh, Putting a spool back on with line like I did, that the uh, line doesn't catch as you uh, put that side plate on. Sometimes the line will catch in the spool here uh, and that'll impede operation and, and it won't be effective. So let's just put this last one together here and then we'll take it for a test drive. So I'm just going to grab my screwdriver then for that last eighth or a quarter inch turn just to snug it up. Again, you can use the screwdriver for the whole way, but if I have those, that's fine. All right, let's take a look. So we got a nice little operation here. We're gonna just make sure that we have the free spool release operational, which we do. We're gonna make sure that it clicks back out as it does. And uh, that's the, uh, the Ambassador 7000, how to service it, how to take it apart, what it's made of, uh, with a couple of hints about uh, if you need to take it apart because you got broken parts or if you want to do the annual service on it, similar to what I just did, how to do it, reminding you that you can get the schematics off of the uh, uh, Abu website. And there's a couple others out there that will share the exploded views. And as you notice, there's part numbers on here as well. So let's just say the drags needed to be replaced. Uh, you could work through Abu or any of their authorized parts uh, suppliers. Uh, to get those uh, replacement parts by referencing those numbers. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Uh, if you've liked the video, please uh, indicate that on YouTube. If you uh, want to see more of these, please subscribe. Uh, in the meantime, um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, I'm going to sign off. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.